Okay, hello everyone. This is Dale Sheldon with The Daily Dale, and we are going to do our second installment of um, <laughs> Flash Gen. This is Flash Gen number two, Flash Genealogy. If you're not familiar with this yet, if you haven't seen my other video, uh, basically uh, what you can do is you can send in a Dear Abby style genealogical research question, and I will give myself one hour to try to answer that question. Um, and you will see my screen here uh, while I go through the motions and I'll try to explain what I'm doing. Um, the first one that we did was a fairly basic one. Someone, um, Ashley was her name, didn't have any information on her great grandparents. Uh, she didn't have an ancestry account, so she didn't have access to a lot of the, the things that we might normally look at. And so I just went through and put together a basic um, tree. Uh, and we looked at the 1940 census. We looked at uh, find a grave and some other some other um, things. So uh, tonight we've got something a little bit diff different. Uh, I've already been warned that it's going to be difficult. Um, it's a brick wall of uh, Donna on one of the Facebook groups. By the way, if um, you can, please uh, like uh, the video if you like it. <laughs> and please also subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's The Daily Dale. And in case you're not that familiar with YouTube yet and you're just seeing this video for the first time, maybe you saw it on Facebook and you're, you're not familiar with the website, I'll just show you what that looks like real fast. This is my channel on um, YouTube. And you'll see the videos I've done here so far. There aren't a lot. I've only just started this channel. These are mainly just basic journal posts so far. Um, you'll see on the right-hand side here is subscribe. Uh, I only have 57 subscribers so far, which is not bad con considering I've only been doing this for a few days. Um, and then down here are playlists. And basically, I'm going to organize these videos into playlists. So if there's a particular type of video that you like to watch. You can just look at the playlist instead and just watch them in a row. Uh, and if you put them on your television, if you have an HD uh, TV or if you watch them on your phone, um, they'll automatically play. Uh, so it's even actually listen to these on my drive because I have a nearly a two hour commute each way. Excuse me, I guess these. <laughs> Try not to sneeze. Uh, so it's good to just listen to some of these YouTube videos sometimes. Um, also, if you're just watching a video, if you can't see the channel, I'll just click on a video so you can see what it looks like. Let me pause it so it's not talking. This is the last Flash Gen video that I made. Right here where you see channel settings, you won't see that on your end. You'll see another subscribe. You can also like the videos down here and you can comment on them down here if there's something that you'd like to mention regarding the video. And okay, so that's YouTube. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Let's get back to Donna and her question. She said, have some coffee ready. I don't have coffee. I have some Diet Dr. Pepper, which I, I know I shouldn't be drinking, uh, but I just, I don't really drink coffee. Um, here's her question. Uh, she actually had two questions, by the way. I'm, I'm only gonna do the first one. I might save the second one for another time. Um, it says the first, the first question is John Fitzgerald, born about 1807 in Tennessee. He married Susanna Chanel, born in 1806 in Maury County, Tennessee, um, on August 5th, 1827. That's when they were married. And they had two sons, James T. Fitzgerald in 1828 and Bird, um, my great great grandfather in 1829. John died in 1856 in Washington County, Illinois. I have the listing on the marriage for John and Susanna, but that is all. So that's all. She doesn't have, uh, I mean, the first thing I would want to do is try to find them in the 1850 census. Um, since we know that he was alive at that time. Uh, and just a side note, I have been able to trace Susanna back to Etienne Chanel in 1675. I'll just mention too, because you can't see the spelling, Susanna's last name is spelled S-H-I-N-A-L-L, -L, which would be an anglicized, more even phonetic rather than anglicized version of the original French name, which was phonetically identical Chanel, but uh, pronounced or spelled C-H-E-N-E-L-L. <clears throat> 
N-A-U-L-T. So if you're ever doing um, genealogy of uh, European families other than English, French, German, uh, take into consideration how it's uh, how it would be pronounced um, and how someone might write it based on that. I have this in my own family. I have an ancestor named Jean-David Guerret, uh, and his last name was spelled G-U-E-R-R-A-Z. Uh, and he was in California. So when I first saw the name, I thought uh, Guerrez, that he was like, he was Spanish or, or, or Mexican, um, considering the history here. He was actually from uh, Geneva, Switzerland, and the French occupied part of Geneva, and his family came from France, and his last name was spelled, uh, pronounced Guerre, not Garaz. Uh, and you can actually find his name spelled G-A-R-E-Y and G-A-R-Y on various documents because they just said Guerre. Uh, Guerre. <clears throat> um, okay, so John Fitzgerald, let's set the timer. One second here. Timer, timer, timer. I got home really late tonight because there was an accident on the freeway. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Let's add one. It is now 9-11, so I'm going to put for 10. Actually put like 10-12. And it's 9-12 as I say that, so it's perfect. Save. And we have 60 minutes. Okay, I'm going to go back. So I can read this again. And uh, let's do what we did before. So we're just going to start a new tree. And another hard part about this is the name is Fitzgerald. And that is a very common name. Um, Fitzgerald is like um, Fitzhugh or Fitz... Uh, can't think of any right now. Fitzgilbert, I think, might be one. Uh, Fitz just means, I believe, son of or possibly grandson of. I think it's son of. Um, so Fitzgerald was the son of Gerald. Okay. We're going to start here. So we've got John. Ready to go. Yes, John Fitzgerald. Of course, the most famous Fitzgerald in the United States was our previous president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, uh, born 1807 in Tennessee, and died 1856 in Washington County, Illinois. We don't know his parents, so we're just going to put, uh, it, it makes you put a father or a mother when you're first starting this, so I'm just going to hit that, uh, just leave it at Fitzgerald. And I'm going to not allow others to see this because it's not my own family. Okay, I just changed some of the settings. I didn't know you could change the colors on here, um, so that was new for me. Let's just go ahead and open up John. And we'll add his wife, Susanna Chanel. And she was born 1806 in Maury County, Tennessee. I always get rid of the USA. It's just a personal preference of mine. And what else do we have here? We have that they were married. Come on. There we go. They were married on August the 5th, 1827. Someone asked me um, after my last video about the dates. Why do I put the dates in this format? Generally, most genealogists, most trees are in the format that you see, excuse me, below here. 5 August, 1827. <clears throat> That is the European format. It is the generally accepted format um, for genealogists. So by all means, do it that way. I'm just an odd duck in that I prefer this other format. I think the reason why I've done it, I've always written it that way. Um, and I think because when I started genealogy when I was 10 years old, 
Um, I was only looking at records and genealogy here in California because my family went so far back here, um, as far as back as anyone knew into the 1870s, uh, 1860s, we were all in California. And all the, rec all the records, all the documents that I ever saw um, always used this old format, August 5th, 1827, with the August written out. So it feels more authentic to me. Um, this format feels either European or it feels um, technological to me because it's a more logical format, actually. Uh, but it just never felt right. So that's just my personal preference. I like the old style. Um, but, you know, feel free to write it however however you like. Um, and what else do we have here? They had two sons, right? James T. Fitzgerald. We're going to add a son. And he was born 1828. And we have another son named Bird, who is actually her ancestor. And he was born 1829. Now I like Bird, because that's an unusual name. Fitzgerald is somewhat common. Um, and there could be lots of Fitzgeralds that are in no way related to each other. Uh, but Bird, is an un unusual first name. So that um, might be where we start here, actually. So let's start a new page, Ancestry. I'm gonna go ahead and close my YouTube channel. And we're gonna search all records. I'm just gonna start kind of broad, because I'm just curious what comes, oh, not Hastings, that's, <laughs> Another family I was searching earlier, uh, Bird Fitzgerald. And we're going to do exact. I always start with exact first, and then I can always narrow or, or broaden my search if I need to. Um, we know that at least in 1856, they were in Illinois. They were in Tennessee before that. We don't know how long. They were in Tennessee. She didn't mention where they were married. So let's start with Illinois. And see what comes up. Cook County death records. Here we go. So here's Bird Fitzgerald, born about 1826. Died in Chicago, September 3rd, 1901. That sounds like it's our guy. Fortunately, there's not a lot of information here. Doesn't even say where he was born. He was widowed, buried at Mount Olive. So let's go ahead and add this to Bird. Sometimes when you add through here, it takes a minute for it to generate for some reason. If you go through here, oops, through him himself as a hint. See, I don't even have any hints yet though. Ah, there, finally, okay. Bird Fitzgerald. What was her question, actually? What's her actual question? Um, I would love to find out more about John Fitzgerald's ancestors. Okay. So just general. That's fantastic. That's nice. Okay. So September 3rd, 1901 in Chicago, Cook, Illinois. Buried same day? Is that right? go back to here. By the way, I don't know if you can hear it, but if you hear my house shake or rattle, <laughs> it is incredibly windy up here right now. Um, I had to stop at the gas station on the way here and sat in my car while it was 
pumping gas because it was so crazy windy. And while I was sitting there, um, I, it felt like a tornado came through. Like the whole car shook. Um, very unusual for California, especially for up in the mountains. Well, I mean, we get high winds up here, but not tornado feeling winds. Uh, okay, so we have that. Oh, and he was buried at Mount Olive Cemetery. Okay. Now we have a couple more hints. Let's just see what they are. Um, death index is probably not going to be any additional information, but we'll go ahead and attach it. This is coming from an outside website. Let's go ahead and open that and see what it does. And we'll attach this while we're doing that. Uh, Illinois Statewide Death Index. Name of decedent, Smith John. So let's do Fitzgerald Bird. And we know this was in Cook County. Bird Fitzgerald, 1901. No information, unfortunately. There's a certificate number. Um, so at least um, Donna can order the death certificate that might offer some information. Did I already add this? Uh, which one is this? Did I add this already? I thought I just did. Let's go ahead and do this again, just in case. Okay. And what else do we have here? I think we just had some trees. Of course, always be careful with trees. Um, we never know if the information is accurate or not. So this tree shows he married Martha Eubank. Uh, Martha Eubank again. Show some of the kids, Sheridan Anderson, Martha Eubank, Martha Eubank. Hmm. There's a lot of, a lot have him here. None of them, do any of them have his parents? None of them do, so that's interesting. Born 1807, Tennessee, Susanna Chanel, James T. Hmm. Okay, well, um, I never review the, I mean, I review them, but I never attach these. Uh, because they're just trees. It's not real documentation. If you want to, I mean, go into a tree, see what kind of documents they've come up with, and um, then attach those actual documents, but never attach a tree. To me, I just, that's not, it's not real documentation. Um, and look, these don't have many sources to be, none of, well, these don't have any sources. Um, only these two at the top have sources. Let's take a look at them. I have a feeling it's going to be the same stuff, though. Uh, 1870, oh, 1870 census in Cairo. Oh, and here, look. They show, they don't cite a source, but they show that he was married October 6th, 1850. To Martha Eubank. So let's keep that in mind. This one doesn't have anything else. Uh, so let's look at this census real quick. So we have Bird, his wife A. Why A? Didn't they say her name was Martha? Martha J. Eubank. There's question marks on it, though. Hmm. 
uh, and then children, although this does seem to be our guy, Bird Fitzgerald, um, the age is correct. And then he has three children here. So he was born, oh, so this says he was born in Illinois. All right. So he was born in Illinois. Let's go ahead and add this to bird. And what I like to do is I like to put census here so we can see what it is. Um, he had, let's open this up again. So we're going to put with wife and children. No occupation is listed for some reason. That's interesting. Um, no real estate noted. Only $100 in personal estate. You know, I have to wonder, since it's just um, initials, that perhaps the family wasn't there at the time the enumerator came by and they got this information from one of their neighbors. Cause it's a little odd. There's no names um, and no occupation listed. Uh, but we do know that he was born, oh, he was from Illinois, uh, born in Illinois, no person, no real estate. Oops. No occupation noted, 100 personal property. So the reason why I do this, oh wait, let me also put the day. So this was June 24th, 1870. I always put the actual day the numerator was there, um, even though that wasn't the day that the information should be based on. Okay. But the reason why I do this is as I'm gathering information, it will all be listed here and you can see the exact day, the city, and you can see basic information, um, like a little snapshot of him at that time. It's like who he was living with, what he was doing, what his economic status was. And as I add more of these, um, it gives you a better picture of his life over time in a, in a very short little area. And some hints came up again. Oh, it's just this as well. So we're going to ignore that. So we're not getting a lot, which which she warned us <laughs> about. Uh, let's keep going. And we have the Civil War draft card. Let's see what this tells us. So this one, it's the right age from Illinois, but he's living in Missouri. I would say this is probably him. Um, just because his name is not very common, it's the right age, it's the right um, state. Because remember, all I searched here was anyone named Bird Fitzgerald from Illinois. And this is it. That's all we've got, an 1870 census the Cook County Death Index, uh, the other Cook County Death Index, um, and so a couple of trees, and this, and the civil registration. So I would say this is him. Uh, let's find him on here, Fitzgerald, where he, here he is, Bird Fitzgerald. He's living in Pike, Stoddard County, married, born in Illinois, Former military service, none. Oh, look, this guy here was in the rebel army. <laughs> uh, three months on guard. That's someone else, though. All right, well, let's add this. It doesn't give us a lot of information. You know what might give us information? Well, let's do this first. 
if we have time, we can come back. But we, we still want to try to find actually his father um, and try to get a little bit further back in the family here. So we're going to go ahead and add this. Oh, wait. Yeah. Ah, uh, come on. While we're waiting for that, let's go back and edit this search and try John. And let's try Washington County because John is such a common name. Uh, when you're doing the search, you know how I was removing the USA when I'm adding the record to the family tree? When you're doing a search, leave it because if you don't, it can sometimes mess up with the algorithms on Ancestry.com. Okay, so we've got John Fitzgerald in Washington County. I have the 1850 census. We have some, well, this can't, Illinois death, but it can't be. What is this? Born 1844. Oh. Ah. Donna found an aunt. Um, Lydia Jane Fitzgerald married Morgan, born December 19th, 1844 in Ashley, Illinois. Died September 23rd, 1933 in Marion, Illinois. She's at the IOF Cemetery. That was her address, but look at her parents, John Fitzgerald of Tennessee and Susan uh, well, let's put Chanel, but it's it's that same name, Chanel. Um, so good. Let's add that. Let's get back to here though. Bird. And now we know that the family was living in Ashley, Illinois, in 1844, um, and that and that the dad died in Washington County in 1856. So in the 1850 census, they're most likely either going to be in Ashley, which I've never heard of. I don't know if that's actually a county or a town. We'll find that out in just a second. Uh, July 1st, 1863. We're going to put... What kind of record was that? I mean, Civil War, but was it a draft? Draft registration. Okay. So I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to put Civil War Draft Registration, and I'm going to put um, Mary, where, where did he go? Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald. Ah. Oh, here he is. Uh, married, 36, no, formal, no former service. Oh, farmer. I missed that before. OK, so we're going to put farmer. Married, 36, no previous military service. Um, okay. So that's a nice little thing. But let's add this sister. we put a daughter named Lydia Jane. She was born December 19th, 1844 in Ashley. There's Ashley. Okay, it's not coming up. Let's go to Google Maps. I'm going to do Ashley, Illinois. Oh, it's in Washington County, so it's actually the same place. Um, so Ashley is in Washington County, so that helps. That is most likely um, where the father passed away as well. So we're we're narrowing down where the Fitzgeralds lived um, in the 1840s and 1850s. So we're going to put Washington, Illinois. She died April 23rd, 1933 in Benton, Franklin, Illinois. Wait, is that where? No, no, sorry. Marion Williamson, Illinois. Get 
rid of the USA. Um, we also know now that Susanna sometimes went by Susan. So I'm going to just add, not everyone does this either. Some people actually really don't like this. Uh, but I like to add nicknames like this. I don't, I never add more than one, um, but it just helps me sometimes. Um, and that's, again, that's another personal preference. Uh, so let's go back to Lydia Jane, because we also have her husband was Bourbon. Wow, Bourbon M. Morgan. Interesting name. We don't know anything about him. Uh, she is not listed as a widow, though, is she? No, she was. So he died before her. So he died before 1933. We also, yeah, we also know that she was buried. Does it say the day? Burial date, April 25th. My birthday, just a couple of days ago, April 25th, 1933. At the IOOF Cemetery in Benton, Franklin, Illinois. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. Now let's look at her hints. Oops. Oh. Oh no, what just happened here? I accidentally ignored that. Let me go back to ignored review. This is the information that we just added. I'm actually going to attach it this time. Since I did it by hand a moment ago, I'm just going to quickly attach this to the tree. All the information is already here. Um, okay, and then we have her in the 1900 census. Let's just look at this real quick. Um, since we're not focusing on Lydia, I'm not going to add it right now, but um, I'm just curious to see like who might be in the household. Because uh, sometimes, you know, if her mother, for instance, was still alive, uh, at the time she would be she might be here uh so it has lydia morgan oh wow this is terrible handwriting um she only had only had one child who was living and it looks like yeah the son ed something getley uh born september 1873 was living with her so bourbon must have been her second husband bourbon morgan um who was she was the widow of when she passed away uh, oh and here listen it says that her parents were born in illinois her son was a coal miner so they're kind of starting to give us some idea of um, their status. Remember her father, no, her brother, wasn't it her brother? Bird um, was listed with only $100 and no real estate. So this is not a very affluent family, I guess we could say. Uh, I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to ignore it because it's correct. I just don't want to add all that right now. I'm going to come back to it or, or Donna can come back to it. Um, Leave that. Find a grave. Let's look at this. John Francis Fitzgerald, 1919. So that's not our guy. Let's look at the 1850 census. John H. Fitzgerald, born 1849. Why would he? Okay. Let's look at this. James and Mary. 
1850. James, 22 years old in 1850, right? So he would have been born in 1828. So this would be James T. Fitzgerald. This would be the brother. And he was living in Washington County in 1850. It's just odd that the father, John Fitzgerald, who was still alive at that time, didn't show up. Hmm. That's very strange. Let's broaden this. Um, uh, if, if you don't want to edit here, you can just change this. So uh, if I right now I'm only looking at Washington County, I can expand that to the county and adjacent counties. Um, and let's also ex just get rid of the name John, actually. I just want to see what Fitzgeralds were living in the area. James, Mary, and John. Those are the only... Oh, wait. It went back to Washington. Let's see. expand. Still only James, Mary, and John. Let's expand to the entire state of Illinois. 247... Let's add John back on. See if there's anyone who comes close in age. Uh, here's a John from LaSalle, but showing he's from Ireland, so that doesn't match. Let's try Susan, his wife. And what we'll do is put Susanna with an asterisk. Um, asterisk, whatever, how do you ever say that? Um, so if there is a Susanna, it will come up. And there is a Susan, but she's born in 1850, so that's not her. Let's try the sister. We now know that they had a sister, Lydia. Oh, her name wasn't Morgan, though. Gently, something like that. Let's try that. And I'm not sure about the spelling. Let's expand to exact sounds or similar <sighs> nothing why aren't they in the 1850 census donna what's going on here where are they all right so maybe they're not in illinois hmm we didn't find bird either Leighton Carter. Ah. Ha 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 ha. Where are these people? I can see what she means. I mean, I think we found a little bit more, but some land office records. John in Washington in 1856. But this isn't going to give us any information. I mean, it'll tell us where he lived. If you haven't seen one of these, I mean, this actually doesn't even say necessarily where he lived. It's just a description of land that he owned. Um, hmm. But it's not going to be a great help to us right now. I mean, that's great to look at later because uh, I like to actually look at the actual land, find the actual land. That's a fun thing to do, but that's not our goal right now. Um, 
let's search for John. You know what? Let's. Oh, he's not even showing up in earlier census records. So let's expand this uh, to the state of Illinois. And, oh gosh, see, the name is so common. That makes it really rough. Um, I want to go back earlier. We know that Lydia was born in Washington County in 1844. So maybe the family was there in 1840, but there's just something wrong with the spelling of the name. 1840 census. expand this a little bit why where are they what is this Now we know Bird was living in Missouri in the 1860s. So let's try which one is this? Is the AT? Oh yeah, we'll leave that here. I'll leave that up. I'm not going to attach it right now, but we'll leave it up. Uh, Illinois marriages. No, I don't want to do that either. Well, Hmm. Any in Washington County? So I'm starting to think that they weren't in Washington very long or that they might have gone back and forth. There's just not a lot coming up, and it's weird that they're not in the 1850 census unless the name was mangled and there's a bad transcription of it. Let's go back. Uh... Okay, Stoddard County, Missouri. Let's try John Fitzgerald in Stoddard County, Missouri. Ah, like nothing. 1900 census, we know he was long past. World War I, public member tree. I'm sure this is probably of the gentleman who lived much earlier. Let's try Susan. Nothing. Let's try Susan with an asterisk. Nothing. Let's try Bird. Really? That's all that comes up? Uh, these people are killing me. 
All right. Uh, what else do we have going on here? What was this? John, Iowa, Iowa, 1840. This mortality schedule. A mortality schedule was a supplement to some census records. But none of these are Washington County or seem to have any connection to us. 1880, 1830 even. It's probably not the same guy. Clinton, no. Hmm. <laughs> You're right, Donna. I mean, we found out about Lydia that something, but it's not much. I like to see a lot more. I thought I remembered something else. Oh, here. What was this? Okay. Here's something. So there's John Fitzgerald in Washington County in 1855 in a state census. Let's see what this tells us. Ah. Uh, I was hoping it would be more like the 1850 census where it lists everyone, but it doesn't. But, huh, this isn't too bad. Um, value of property, okay. So, hmm. Here we have, remember the name Eubank? I believe some of those family trees showed that Bird had married, um, uh, I can't remember her first name, was it Martha Eubank? And there are Eubanks here, John Eubank and a Richard Eubank. This Richard Eubank lives right next to John Fitzgerald, and right next to John is James. Um, and then we have some tally marks for ages. These are probably the boys. Yeah, free white male persons under 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, and so on. And then free white females with the same. So we have John had two boys under 10 years old. He had one boy between 10 and 20, one between 20 and 30, and himself between 40 and 50. And we know John, according to Donna, although I'm not sure where she got her information, was, oh, well, must be from the marriage record, actually, probably had a birthday, uh, said that he was born in 1807. So if he's born in 1807, um, between 40 and 50, 48 years old, right? My math in my head right now uh, would be a, a good, a proper match for our John Fitzgerald. Um, he has a son here between 20 and 30. We don't know that it's a son actually, but there's a, a male in the household between 20 and 30. And we know Bird um, fits that age group. James was only a year older than Bird, so he fits this age group as the oldest male in this household. And he's listed as having two sons under 10 um, or two men in the house, boys in the household under 10. Um, there's also the one female who's the same age between 20 and 30, so that would be his wife, and it looks like two girls of under 10 years old. So we're sh showing James and his wife as having four children, two boys and two girls, in 1855. Um, all of the children are under 10 years old. That's very normal and common for a young couple in their 20s. 
um, probably in their later 20s, which actually we know they'd be in their later 20s because we know when um, James was born in 1828. Uh, and then we have John. We see one tally here, which would be, yeah, the same age as John. So that would be his wife. And it looks like there's three girls between the age of 10 and 20. And then I'm pretty sure this has got to be Bird between 20 and 30. So this seems to be a match. So what I'm going to do is we, we don't have a lot of information here, unfortunately, but we know there's a lot of other children that we're missing. Um, I'm going to go back to the family tree and I'm going to put in... Um, so we know James, we know Bird, we know there's another son, most likely. We can put lowercase son so that we know it's not a name. Um, and this was in the 1850 census. Sorry, 1855 census. Um, between 10 and 20 years old. So born between 1835 and 1845. So we're going to put born between 1835 and 1845. Um, Ancestry doesn't like this. <laughs> um, you know what? Let me see if they like it when I do it. No, yeah, I didn't think so. It's been a while since I've done these date ranges. Um, but for me, I I still do this because it's it's an accurate date range. It's based on actual documentation. We know that this person was born between these, these dates. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, oh, wait, I have to, have to let them know if he has to use this. Come on. There it goes. And save. And it's only going to put the earliest date on here, unfortunately, but when you're looking at it, it'll, it'll show. Um, and then we have two sons under 10, so born between 1845 and 1855. So we're going to add them. Uh, son, put son one. Uh, I'll just put son. Be born between 1845 and 1855. Yes, use this. Come on. There it goes. And we're going to do another one of those. So that means that there's... We've got to be able to find this family in the 1850 census. That's really getting to me. Um, okay, and then we've got, okay, that would be Bird, that's him, and then we have three daughters born between, you know what, instead of, I probably should have done it with these, but, um, Normally, I would never suggest doing something like this. Um, this is just temporary while we try to figure out um, who these people were. I'm going to put three daughters born between Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Two daughters, because one of them we know, right? Lydia was born in 1845 or 1844. So it's going to change her name to two daughters born during that time. And you know what? This is going to bug me. So I'm going to uh, get rid of this. 
and we'll delete this person. And I'm going to change, ah, which one was it? The youngest one, right? Okay. We're going to change this to two sons. So it's consistent. Not pretty, I don't like doing this, <laughs> um, but at least it's consistent. We can see that there are additional children that we know about. <sighs> Lydia was born in 1844, so she should be six years old in the 1850 census. And her name is far less common than John. So I'm gonna try again. Um, Yeah, census and voter registrations. We're going to go Lydia. We're going to put she was born about 1844. We'll widen the search a couple of years. We're not going to put any place and just see and cross our fingers. Okay, 18. There's only one Lydia Fitzgerald in that age group in the 1850 census. Lydia A. Gerald in Maine. Maine. Martha, John F., Deborah, Amos, Rebecca. This does not look like a match, and the name's wrong. It's Gerald, not Fitzgerald. There is this. They have gone up to Canada? No, because this says she was, this Lydia was born in Canada. Although that could be a mistake. The name must be mangled or spelled wrong, or for some reason they weren't enumerated. Here's James, Elizabeth, Thomas, Church of England, but all born in Canada, so that doesn't look right. I'm going to try something else. We, I want to focus on the 1850 census. So let's get rid of Fitzgerald altogether, find out how many people named Lydia <laughs> were living in Illinois in 18... 50 that were born around 1844. I think this is going to be too broad of a search. 220. Let's see how many were in Washington County. None. There was not one girl named Lydia in Washington County in that age range. That's, that's crazy. Hmm. I also know Bird was married in 1850 to Eubank. Try the opposite. Fitzgerald. No. Let's try. We know they were from Ashley, Washington. Get rid of the name altogether. <laughs> like how many? Ah. Uh. Is there no specific census for Ashley? Wait a second, wasn't...
Where is he? He's in Washington. What am I missing here? Why is nothing coming up? We're doing the whole county. There's no one in that age range? Elizabeth Taylor? <laughs> um, oh, gosh. We're doing born. That's why. Was I doing that the whole time? Let's try Lydia again. Born 1844, give or take a couple of years. Here's a Kennedy. Oh, look. Finally, Lydia J. Fitzgerald, and they spelled Fitz with an S. You've got to be kidding me. 1845, that's her. That's this is them, John and Sucky. <laughs> so Susan apparently also went by the nickname of Sucky, uh, which I've heard oh, in that TV show True Blood, I think. Um, so we've got some of the other children, uh, the other sisters, the other daughters, Susan, Mary, and Lydia, and... John. Who's John? So Bird is still not here, but we know, according to that other uh, family tree, Bird married in 1850. So he's probably somewhere else. Maybe his family's or his last name is also misspelled. Um, okay, let's add this. So this is something, at least. Um, Wait, let me go back here. I'm going to go to... I, I want to find John specifically. So we're going to put John Fitzgerald, Washington County. I'm just curious. I'm going to put bird real fast. No, okay, that's right. Let's go back to John. 1807, and we are going to add this. Come on. Always does this. Uh, I'm going to go back over here. We're going to get rid of this because we know the other two daughters' names now. So we're going to edit and delete. And let's add daughter. Is this ready yet? This it is. Okay, John Fitzgerald. I'm just going to add the record to John. Um, and let's see what the date is. This was September 11th, 1850. And what I'm going to do is go down here and edit this census. Uh, what do we got? We've got A uh, farmer with 150 in real estate. Uh, and he can read and write because it's not marked. Um, so we're going to put farmer, 150 real estate, can read and write with, uh, with wife and four children. We'll put Susan, Mary, John, and Lydia. Susan, 
Mary, Sean, and Lydia. I'm also going to go back over here real quick. Since Susan is more obvious, because remember I said I only put one nickname if I put one at all. Um, Susan is a more obvious nickname. Um, Suki is not. So we're going to change that or Suki maybe. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, let's go back over here and add the daughters. So we've got, let me get this out of the way. Okay, we've got Susan A. She was born, let's see, she was 13 years old in 1850, so she was born in 1837 in Illinois. Okay, and we're going to add another daughter. Uh, Mary E. She was born 1838 in Illinois. Oh, our time's up already. That's crazy. No, I'm going to finish this. I might go a little bit longer because that was annoying me. We finally have something going here. Um, and let's see, we've got John. Is that a J? I guess it's a J because it's similar to Lydia down here. We know that's a J. We'll go with that. John J. Oh, when was John J born? John J. Whoops, 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 whoops. He is eight years old. So he was born 1842. So he's going to be this one. Um, He's not one of these. So these two sons must have been born after 1850, right? Because they were both alive in the 1855 census, and they were both under 10 years old at that time, but they're not listed in the 1850 census. So they must have been born between. So let's go to this real fast and just edit this to 1850 to 1855. And we'll note not listed in... The 1850 federal census noted as under 10 in the 1855 state census. So that confirms that they were both born between 1850 and 1855. And now we're going to go to their brother, their unnamed, previously unnamed brother, and change his name to John J. And we know now that he was born, what did I say? It was 1842, eight years old in Illinois. So let's change this to 1842 in Illinois. Now let's go back to John for a minute. I'll leave this alone. Close that. Close that. That was helpful. We've already, did we add this? No. We add this. Uh, this is for, yeah, this is for John. Okay, let's add this here. Third, we put Washington County. So that's attached to the tree, so we don't have to worry about finding that over again. <coughs> I'm also going to attach this real quick to James. Uh, to, to, to. Here we go. 
I don't know if you noticed that over here, it's telling you who the individual is. Um, so it was noted as John H. Because I, when I was searching for the older John, I found this baby John um, in the 1850 census. And we found that it was the, the child of, of James. Um, but I want to attach this record to James because he's the head of household. Um, but right now it's showing John here. And if I attach, it's going to attach to to the son, the infant son, John. But I want to attach to James. So if you notice at the bottom, it says others in the record. We click on James, this changes. So now when I attach it, it's going to attach to the father. Or it's going to reference that rather. It's going to attach to whoever I tell it to attach to. Uh, James T, 1828. Um, I won't, you know, normally I change these. I won't do it right now because I really just want to attach the record because we're already past our time. Um, so that's done. And I want to go back here. I can get rid of this. And let's look at this. So we know that uh, they married in 1827. That's a, according to Donna. He, we don't know where they're married. She probably has that information. I'm sure we could find it if we, we search further. But we know the family was already living in Illinois by 1837. So they should be in Illinois in the 1840 census as well. The reason why I'm trying to find this out is if we can get a little bit further back, I'm hoping that we'll find John living near his relatives. As a matter of fact, actually, let's look at this real quick. Because we didn't look at the other people on the page. Let's see if there are any other Fitzgeralds. Um, there's Wittenberg, something, Fanner, Fanes, Carter, House, House. Holcomb go. Let's go a uh, page forward and back as well. Newman House, Wittenberg, Thurman Bollard, Newton, Thompson, Lindsay, Johnston. There's a lot of Wittenbergs. A ton of Wittenbergs in this town. Let's go the opposite direction. Miller Gove, Carter, House. It's like all the same. It's like there's three families in this whole town. Um, Bullock, White. There's 166 pages, though. But I'm not seeing any other Fitzgeralds. Pate, House, Phillips, Logan, White. Okay. Uh, so let's stop with that. See if there's any new hints. Nope, there's not. Okay, we're gonna search some more. I know I shouldn't. Um, and what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna put John, I'm gonna put in the incorrect spelling because I'm just curious. And we're gonna put lived in Washington County, Illinois. the same stuff. Man, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear the wind. It's pretty crazy. Man, I'm going way over my time. I gave myself a specific limit and I'm going way over it, but ah, uh, Illinois veterans. Just want to find something more. Oh, look, here's the son, John J., born 1842, was a veteran of the Civil War. Service entry September 30th, 1861, in Ashley, Illinois, which we know was in Washington County. Ah, uh, how sad. He was killed in action. September 1st, 1862. 
at Britain's Lane, Tennessee. Joined by Robert Allen. Birthplace, Washington County, 1842. He was 5'8", light hair, blue eyes, light complexion. He was married. Uh, he was only 19 years old and he was married. Um, light hair, blue eyed, ah, so sad. Uh, Company I of the 30th Illinois Infantry. So that's something you could look into, Donna. Um, look at your new uncle, John Jay, and his Civil War record. Um, I might want to suggest looking at Fold 3, see if anything comes up. Um, put John Jay Fitzgerald. Civil War. <clears throat> mm. Let's get rid of all these. He wasn't in the Navy. He wasn't in New York. That's Company E, Indiana. Army Registration Enlistment. Let's see what this is. United States Army. So now we're looking at Civil War records. I'm hoping, because we're way over our time, hoping to find something uh, here's John J. Labor. No, he's from Massachusetts. That's not our guy. Um, this might be something if you don't already have a, a Fold 3 account, Donna, to uh, maybe look at. Um, because it looks like at least John J. was there. And I think wasn't Bird also with the Civil War? I think he was. Um, so you definitely have some interesting records to look at. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, we're way over my time. I'm sorry, I just, this was a difficult family. Good one, Donna. I wish I could have found more going further back. Definitely want to look, um, look into it more. Um, maybe in Maury County, Tennessee, uh, since we know um, his wife was from there, right? The Fitzgeralds may have been there from there as well. I would start looking in the early records there um, prior to 1840, because we know that some of the kids were already born in Illinois in, 18, in the 1830s, right? Um, 1837, Susan was born in Illinois. So maybe check 1830, 1820, 1810 census for anyone by the name of Fitzgerald in Maury County. Um, in fact, you know what? I just, I can't help myself. We're just gonna check real fast, Fitzgerald. Uh, we don't know what the name of his father might have been. And we're going to try Maury County, Tennessee. And it's, let's just, just check real fast. Um, we're looking at 1840 census. I'll see one other thing. No, I'm going to attach this to John J. real fast so you have this. Uh, While well, that's waiting, I want to see if there's no. Okay, I was looking for birth records, um, but here's the 1820 census. 
there are some fight girl Fitzgerald Fitzgerald <laughs> there are definitely some Fitzgeralds all in Williamsport it looks like in the 1820 census so I would actually recommend looking at probate records in Maury County Tennessee in 1820 or uh, just anytime actually um, just any Fitzgerald who died in Maury County uh, look at their probate records and hopefully you'll find John's father and that he will list John as his child um, and if John had already moved they might even mention that he was in uh, Illinois at the time sometimes the probate records will have mentioned that uh, or they might also mention the grandkids and since we have the names of a lot of the elder children James Bird Susan Mary John uh, maybe they would be listed, <clears throat> especially if Bird is listed. If we can find Bird Fitzgerald as a child in his grandfather's probate records or will, that's a slam dunk, then that would prove it for you. Um, you might be able to find them. I don't know if they're there at familysearch.com. Uh, Family Search has a lot of great probate records. If we go to search and Go to the United States, go to Tennessee. Uh, and we go down to Tennessee probate books and files, 1795 to 1927. Uh, if we click on one of these, we can hope. These are usually not indexed. Um, so you won't be able to find these just by searching names. You actually have to actually look in the books themselves. Um, so we can click on Maury County. And hopefully there is an index of the wills. Uh, beneficiaries, bonds, inventories. It doesn't look like there is a large index, unfortunately, which means you just have to go through. Um, so you'll see here Wills 1806 to 1815, Volume 1 or Volume A, um, Wills 1809 to 1821. B. You actually have to go through each of these. I'll just do one so you can see what these usually look like. The Oh, let me sign in real fast. This is free, by the way. Um, Family Search is organized by the Mormon Church, uh, so it's all nonprofit. And we're looking at the actual microfilm reels and the original books when we do this. And in those original books, what they did back before the computers is they put indexes usually at the beginning of the book, which is very, very helpful. And each page would have um, the a letter. So page one would have everyone with a surname beginning with A would be on page one and it would list them and it would put the page that they were on over here and you can even see what's left of the the indexing letters. Uh, so page one is the A's. We are looking for F. So page two, B. So we need C, D, E, and F. So we need four more pages forward. So we're going to go to page seven instead of clicking and loading every single one. And so you go to page seven and we have all the Fs. Um, there's no Fitzgerald. So we know no Fitzgeralds died in Moore County between 1806 and 1815. Uh, and but then, or at least none that had a, um, a will. So then you go back to Maury County and you go to the next book and you just go through each one uh, until you find a Fitzgerald. So we'll do book B as well. Oh, there's pages missing. That's the worst. No. <laughs> when there's pages missing, um, that that the index is gone. And then so unless someone has actually gone through this book and indexed every page, you're probably out of luck. 
Sometimes, however, the index was at the back of the book. So let's just go to image 250. No. This is, this is just more, these are inventories, more legal papers. So you have your work cut out for you, but I would definitely go through these, these probate and will records in Maury County and, and hope to find something. So if you like this video, please, please like it. As I mentioned before, please go to my YouTube channel, The Daily Dale, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these. And um, comment if you have something that you'd like to say, some suggestions, um, uh, comments of, on things that you've seen. And please also go to Facebook and find our Facebook group, The Daily Dale-Genealogy. You can join the group there and talk about anything genealogy. It doesn't have to be about my videos. It can be anything at all. We want all genealogical related discussion and um, camaraderie. So. Thank you again and have a good night. Bye-bye.